Leading Tunnel Chiropractors, fledgling chiropractors, <laughs> the students, family members, guests, fellow practitioners and professionals, and the GCC, and my good pal Grogan. It is indeed my pleasure to speak before you tonight. I cherish the opportunity, always, to come before an audience that is interested in the separate and distinctness of this profession, that cherishes its right to be an alternative to medicine, not part of medicine. I distinctly see that we are not part of the medical team. We are part of the healthcare team of this nation but not the medical team. I hasten to add that I respect the medical profession highly. I understand that they too have their <coughs> obstacle to healing. However, I take strong contest with medicine in respect to the causation of disease. And in my lecture with you tonight, is the volume better back there now? Testing, how's it coming through now? <laughs> Testing, coming through better? In my lecture with you tonight, I intend to address the cause of disease. This lecture taken from my book, One Cause, One Cure, will have some repetition in it from what I have said before. Because basically, our philosophy is a simple one. The innate concept of healing is not complicated. And there are not too many different ways that you can talk about it. D.J. Palmer expressed his thoughts early on in respect to the cause of disease. He stated, one question was always uppermost in my mind in my search for the cause of disease. I desired to know why one person was ailing and his associate eating at the same table, working in the same shop, at the same bench, was not. What? You see, in those days in the factories in this country, the sweat mills, if you want to call them that, everybody worked in the same environment. They lived in tenement-type buildings that surrounded the factories, drank the same water, ate at the same cafeteria, worked at the same bench, and yet had differing problems. Why? What difference was there in the two persons that caused one to have pneumonia, catarrh, typhoid, or rheumatism, while his, while his partner, similarly situated, escaped? Why? This question, D.D. Palmer said, was answered in 1895. Following D.D., the son B.J. said this. Living under the same environmental conditions, one, one member of the family has heart trouble, another bronchial, a third liver, a fourth stomach trouble, while a fifth may suffer from nervousness, a sixth from sciatica, and so forth, etc. Like causes produce like results, if this be true, if this be natural, how can one who affirms that the cause of disease lies in the environment reconcile the facts to that theory? It is self-evident there is some factor which is not environmental that accounts for the differing results. Chiropractic teaches this unknown factor is found within and that the resistance or susceptibility of the individual must be measured in terms of centrifugal force or vitality, mental impulse. While other professions are concerned with changing the environment to suit the weakened body, chiropractic is concerned with strengthening the body to suit the environment. And now a contemporary author in chiropractic. R. C. Schaefer, D.C., made this statement this year. Last year, pardon me. Most people do not get allergies in the spring or the fall. Some do. 
Yet everyone in the community inhales the same pollens and bones. Why? Most people do not get hepatic cirrhosis from drinking alcoholic beverages. Thank God. <laughs> Some do. Why? Everybody does not get BD or AIDS by having sex with the same infected person. Why? Everybody does not get lung cancer or have a coronary who smokes. Why? The medics always try to blame poor health on something external. This is their gospel. Years ago, it wasn't the gospel of chiropractic. We followed a different drummer. Our leaders in recent years seem to have joined the crowd of the non-thinkers. Why? Our leaders? It's self-evident he is a member of the ACA. <laughs> But the question that has worried thousands for centuries <coughs> that D.D. Palmer spoke of was answered in 1895. And B.J. stated, Mankind has built a gigantic mass of theories of the superiority of outside in values because he knows little of the superiority of above down inside out principle. Properly understood, known, and applied, it would magnify manifold our understanding of the tremendous importance of the one cause, one cure principle. And we have been ridiculed, castigated, suffered under the pressures of organized medicine for years because we held forth one cause, one cure. And that is truly what it is. There is only one cause in disease. There is but one cause in disease. The body's inability to comprehend itself or its environment how many of you have heard me say this, but it bears repeating because you must own it. You must bring it into your heart and your mind. There is but one cure in disease. And that's the body's ability to heal itself. And there's only one thing any doctor can do for a patient. And that is to remove an obstruction to healing, thus facilitating. And all professions work that way. You have an infected wound on your hand, and a medical doctor places an antibiotic upon it, does that heal the wound? No. But he certainly has removed an outstanding obstacle to healing, hasn't he, the overbearing infection. And the medical physician cuts into your body and removes a tumor that's blocking your vital functions so you cannot defecate. Does that heal the body? No. The body has to heal the wound the surgeon made. And when you adjust the patient, does that heal the body? No. You release the force from above, down, inside out. You bring forth that nervous expression that was impeded, that was obstructed by the subluxation and the return of the force. The nervous expression within the body, the nerve energy that controls the entire human body, that affords its own healing directly proportionate to the body's ability to heal. So not everyone heals in the same way, do they? <coughs> we understand that perfectly as limitations of matter. We understand that an individual has constructive and destructive survival values. That the healing in the body is dependent upon what innate has to work with. Innate always has full capacity. It's the body that may not have full capacity. But free of nerve pressure along the spine, the body can function at peak capacity within its own realm, within its internal and external environment. And when the body comprehends its internal and external environment, the body exists then in a state of health, free of dis-ease. 